Yes, uh, Mahesh Joshi and S.P. Tulsian now also join us. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, uh, first of all, of course, uh, Happy New Year to you from uh, the entire team CNBC TV 18. Uh, I wanted your thoughts on uh, the, the housing finance companies today because you have LIC housing which is down 5%, HDFC is down 3.5%, but India Bulls housing finance is up 5%. Your thoughts on the space? Anuj, first let me wish Happy New Year to all of you at CNBC and to all our viewers and I wish them all to be as a, a profitable year of 2017 as well as they had you know, experienced the gain of uh, a good amount in 2016 also. So yes, now coming specifically on the housing finance companies, you know, maybe the the interpretation or the weakness what we have been seeing in case of LIC housing is seen to be misplaced. Because if I just give you the uh, breakup of all the average ticket size of the loan, uh, uh, you know, we have tabulated that in the, the Devan housing has an average ticket size of 12 lakhs, LIC less than 20 lakhs, uh, Kenfin home less than 18 lakhs, India Bull housing 25 lakhs, PNB housing 32 lakhs and HDFC 22 lakhs. If you really go by this sequence, you know, probably I feel that Devan housing having the average ticket size of 12 to 13 percent is seen to be the best place amongst the uh, 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 this new uh, norms having announced by the Prime Minister to capture the credit growth going forward. But again, if you if we all start thinking that probably the entire market share will be taken away by the PSU banks and all that, I don't buy this theory because if you see in the past when the when the uh, housing finance loan rates were slightly higher, maybe by about 10 basis points than the comparable PSU banks available at that point of time, the things have not really gone to the public sector banks in 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 those cases earlier also because if you really see the approach of the public sector banks have really been very lethargic in the past because they have always looked for the wholesale banking or I mean corporate lending and all that where the mortgage type of situations are there 5000 crore having lent by the consortium and all that they have never really thought of going into the retail kind of things maybe consumer loan maybe housing loan maybe vehicle loans but now I think they also have pulled up the shock socks but it will take time for those PSU banks to you know really foray in a significant way and the kind of growth which we will be seeing in this market take the case of his 60 to 70 25 percent as the lending amount against the value of the property people can buy a flat of about say 20 lakh rupees or maybe 25 lakh rupees and in fact the the value of those uh, properties available in that range is seen huge because if you just knock off the two cities that is mumbai and delhi i think in all other places you are you can easily buy the flat within that price and that will be seen a very block very big credit growth uh, uh, booster to be seen for all these housing finance companies. So yes, LIC housing may have, uh, has corrected by about 5%, but that seems to be misplaced and I am keeping a positive stance on the stocks more especially where the ticket size is low and in that pecking order, I'll go with my first preference with Devan housing followed by LIC housing. Okay, Mr. Dulcian, hi, good afternoon, happy new year to you. The other pocket I wanted to chat with you about was the tractor space because I know you track it very well. This time both M&M and uh, Escorts have reported very good tractor numbers. Uh, you think that uh, the trend is on the upside here and uh, which stock would you back from either two? See, Sonia, first let's accept and admit that the kind of, you know, fear which has all been created on the situation prevailing that here is first, you know, we have seen that Ravi sowing will be seen very bad in the whole of the month of November. Media talked on that and now we have finally seen that 7% growth has been seen. 6 point plus, 6 per point plus, that is 6.5% or so in Rabi. And yes, you are right that Escorts and uh, Escorts and uh, Mahindra and Mahindra both have performed very well on the tractor fund. But I will go one one stage, uh, one step further. Maybe if you exclude the Bajaj Auto, I am not now speculating on the Hero Motor and TBS Motor because they have not yet caught with their numbers. And as I said earlier also that on TBS Motor I am keeping a positive view. But if you take the situation on Mahindra and Mahindra, even on the passenger vehicle say, uh, front, the company has performed quite well on a sequential basis because people have all been very apprehensive. We have seen many economists, many uh, uh, experts, you know, saying that December will be seen more fearful because of the cash crunch and all that. So overall, the things are looking quite good for the for, 
for, for, for the for the um, auto space and yes on, on on tractor front but let me just remind here that maybe month of January can be seen as a good sales but then thereafter the always tractor sales takes lull and then we see the recovery again coming in in the month of May when the things will start happening again for the rabi season and on the expectation of good monsoon so I won't be playing merely on the tractor sales theory for Mahindra and Mahindra and escorts but looking to the kind of uh, value erosion which we have seen and the price at which they have all been ruling probably I'll take a buy call on both and maybe on the other automobile stocks also maybe except Bajaj Auto as I said that you exclude Bajaj Auto but apart from that looking to such a, a, a good or satisfactory numbers having seen from auto I am keeping a very positive stance on the auto ancillary space as well because the kind of corrections which we have seen in auto ancillary space also has taken place anywhere between to the extent of 30% to 45% so those also you know gets qualified as a very good buy in that space okay let's do one thing let's go across uh, to Nigel as well uh, for our Monday special mid-cap mania and after that uh, we'll come back to our guests uh Nigel, what stock are you looking at? The first mid-cap mania of 2017. That's right, Anuj. And uh, the stock that we're talking about today is Maharashtra Seamless. What does the company do? They're basically into pipes. Uh, so they're into seamless pipes, as the name suggests. And also they're into ERW pipes. To make this uh, more simple, then we'll focus on their clients. Who are their clients? The clients basically are ONGC, Oil India, and various other private uh, explorers as well. Besides that, they get some demand that's coming in from the pub, from the power sector as well. And importantly, downstream refineries, we talk about the Euro 6 norms for auto segment. Now, there are Euro 6 norms as well that need to be adjusted for even in these refineries. And in fact, they need to go for expansion of the sulfur recovery uh, plants to meet the Euro 6 uh, norms. And that's what could give some kind of fillip uh, to their demand because currently the capacity utilization is not very high. If you take a look at the shareholding pattern as well, promoters holding roughly 60% stake and a whole host of big funds, you know, they, they hold uh, quite a large uh, chunk in the company. So more than 15% is held by various well-renowned uh, names as well. But uh, I was looking at the promoter holding and in fact, they have been creeping into the, into, uh, the open market. So they've bought roughly around two and a half lakh shares or thereabouts uh, in this fiscal itself. So that's another factor that uh, stood out. But why really the company did come on my radar is because I was just taking a look at all the market capitalization and companies that don't have very large debt or, debt or virtually no debt and the cash balances, these are picked up from the company's uh, uh, website itself. They put a presentation. It's more than a thousand crores that they have in investments and the market capitalization is roughly around 1700 crores. So that's what protects the downside risk at least. Even the first half of this year has been very good. Top line growth has been nearly around 20%. This is for the first half of the year is what I'm talking about. But importantly, now they're delivering an operating profit versus an operating loss. And at the halfway mark, they're also giving you a net profit that compares with the net loss as that clearly uh, states. Now, the company has said that the demand for the, from the oil and gas space has been good. That's what's helped them. And also they're focusing on profitability and the cutting cost as well. That's what's given such a good performance in the first half of this year. What I don't like or, or I'm not very comfortable with is that in fact the order book is su sufficient only for one quarter. They're doing around 250, 300 crores in one quarter itself. And in fact the order book is only around 308 crores. That's the number I've got from their website as well. Finally, I'm always worried when I look at these steel and tubes, etc. They've got good protection that's coming in from the government of India. There was a recommendation that came in earlier this year. And in fact, that has been notified on December 9th as well. So that's the company. Rather interesting one. Good first half of the year. Let's see how the second half of the year does pan out. ONGC is the big one over there. Maybe with the crude demand going up, maybe that order book uh, can increase. I was trying to reach out to the management. Capacity utilization not very high. There is capacity coming on screen in the fourth quarter as well. Watch out for this stock. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for educating us about that stock. Uh, just to repeat, this is not a recommendation from Nigel or from CNBC TV 18. It is just hardcore proprietary research from Nigel D'Souza. Thanks so much for that. Well, uh, moving on, uh, the market is still very flat, but mid-caps are picking up pace. So we'll do one thing. We'll take a short break. When we come back after the break, we'll get you a quick check on the mood across the dealing rooms and continue chatting about the stocks. went up sharply your credit growth obviously then they have to come to us and do a switch 
Okay, that's State Bank of India explaining the rationale uh, behind that uh, 90 basis point rate cut, the uh, pretty steep one at that. Uh, but uh, just about uh, 20 minutes left for markets to close today. It's been a decent day. The, uh, the, uh, the market's not been able to recover all the losses on the bank nifty that is, uh, but still almost half the losses have been recovered. Ashwini Gujarat and Mitesh Thakkar back with us now for BTSD calls. Buy today, sell tomorrow. Ashwini, you go first. See, NMDC is a buy with a stop of 124, uh, target of 136. Escorts is a buy with a stop of 318, target of 334. And India Bulls Real Estate is a buy with a stop of 72, target of 84. Mitesh, what about you? Yeah. I also have two buy calls. Uh, Escorts is a buy with a stop at uh, 340. Oh, sorry, 314 and targets of 340. And Aptek is another one which is a buy with a stop at 166. Look for targets of 185. Okay, uh, Ashwini, uh, your BTSC calls are done, but uh, on the on the Nifty and the Bank Nifty, would you be carrying forward uh, any positions? Uh, you have been long, of course, intraday from the low point, but uh, uh, are you carrying them home or uh, would you be squaring off? See, I think from this 18,200-250 zone, uh, which was an important resistance, the Bank Nifty corrected, but hasn't really broken, uh, you know, 18,000 uh, decisively. So, uh, you know, this sort of correction should be bought. Chances are Bank Nifty will go towards 18,600, 650. Uh, you know, what you have today is a nice stop. Today's low can be a stop. And now you can trade this with a uh, target of about 18,650 on the Bank Nifty. As well as on the Nifty with an 8,100 type of stop. I think uh, 83, 8350 could be likely. It will be stop and start like we've had today. But uh, chances are that slowly we'll move towards 8300-8350. Okay, well, I just want to get our viewers' attention to two stocks. Uh, one of them is ITD Cementation. Suddenly, in the last five minutes, that stock has just zoomed. So, just look at the intraday chart of ITD Cementation. 10% higher now. It's at a new 52-week high. And in fact, if you pull up a one-year chart, you'll see that this stock has been unfazed by the uh, kind of, you know, volatility that our market has seen. It's only been moving smoothly upwards. There you have it. 45% in the last 12 months. The other stock that's rallying now is Escorts on the back of very good uh, tractor sales numbers. Escorts is now up almost 10% and huge volumes getting traded on Escorts. Uh, that stock too has been having a very good run. Of course, the last couple of months have been a bit weak, but uh, Escorts there up about 9 odd percent. Let's get an insight into what's happening in the dealing rooms this afternoon. Nimesha is here with Trader Talk. Nimesh, a uh, lot of people getting back to work, first day of work, etc. Uh, what's the mood like? Oh yes, so people are still coming back to work soon. Yeah, but you know, in terms of mood, uh, well, we saw a sharp recovery intraday in the markets today. But you know, there is no tangible reason for this pullback, is what I'm told. The, the cash volumes are still on the lower side. The FIs continue to be net sellers. Yes, there is some bit of DI buying coming in, but that's selective in some select large cap pockets. Nevertheless, you know, the big sector to, which has been talked about is, is banks and housing finance companies uh, under pressure on the back of this sharp uh, MCLR cut by SBI and other, other PSU banks. But the flip side, uh, the gainers have been the real estate names uh, thanks to this, uh, you know, lower, rate, uh, lower rates in the system. But, how, you know, uh, while the, while the uh, Sensex and Nifty have been flat, there, there's big momentum in the mid-cap and small cap. And that's what's been talked about in the dealing desk as well, that at least in the near term, in the absence of any big triggers, that's the space to be in. At least, you know, uh, whether it's real estate names, whether it's sugar names, whether it's you know some of the high high beta momentum is what is likely to play out in the in the mid cap and small cap. The auto have been mixed, so the the next big trigger uh, from the macro point of view would be the earnings season. So that's something to be watch out for. But broadly, from today's point of view, it's it's low on volumes. Uh, the the, the FIs are still let sellers, but it's the big momentum in the mid cap and small cap, which likely is likely to continue at least in the near term. Okay, Nimesh, thanks a lot for that. And let's go across to Varinder as well for some buzzing stocks. Varinder, well, some new names which I'm picking up today is S I E L Limited, Shiva Fertilizers, Kesar Enterprises, Phase Three Exports, and Pix Transmission. Look at some of the small cap gainers. Other small cap gainers: Cerebra, Kilburn, Kilburn Chemicals. All these sugar companies, put your finger on it. Uttam Sugar, Thiru, Arunan Sugar and many others. Genesis International Corporation, Simplex Castings, Prima Plastics, Mangalam Drugs, Jindal Hotel, Chamalan Setia, Sayadri Industries, Ansel Properties, Chambal Breveries and Atlas Cycle. There is something happen in, happening in some of these PSU companies. Look at the volumes among all of them. STC, MMTC, Dredging Corporation, Odisha Mineral, NBCC. Huge upsurge, huge volume, Hindustan Copper as well have been moving higher. Again, some of the small tech, small cap tech companies, they continue to move up, whether it's Datamatics, Vedava, Kosin, 
all up near 10 percent. Some mid cap gainers, huge volume seen in Neil Kamal today, Kulte Patil 20 percent, Minghwani Organics, Saurashtra Simmons, Lovable Laundry, Dalmia Bharat Sugar. Some of the cement companies are seeing uh, favorable uh, price volume action today as well. Okay, Varinda, thanks a lot for that. Well, we still have about 15 more minutes left before the day comes to an end. And uh, in effect, it's uh, not been such a bad day. I mean, mid-caps have rallied quite a bit and the market also has recovered. Yeah, I think it's been a good day. The, the only issue here is that cash market volumes are so low, Sonia, yeah. that you know some of these moves at times will look phenomenal but uh, may not mean much. I think one thing which stands out and Varinda also pointed out that PSU space is rallying. Yeah. And, you know, PSU space and sugar is rallying. I think the UP election would be your next trigger to watch out for. Uh, for right or wrong, the market it will now focus on what the PM might say, what the policies might be. And you know, all of a sudden, the way you're seeing some of these stocks rally is pointing towards that. That's entirely a trading play, of course, uh, the way some of these PSU stocks are rallying, MMTC, STC, dredging and all of that. Uh, but the market has given you a clear play right now. Over the last few days, one play which has been absolutely clear is the, is the PSU play. Mm -hmm. Post demonetization, the only sector which has done well uh, is actually the, the PSU sector. The PSU banking sec stock uh, sector is actually up uh, from the time uh, the demonetization was announced, while the rest of the sectors are down. So that clearly is a trade which is playing out, uh, uh, and it may have some more legs to go. Clearly. Oh yes. In fact, you know the other stock we should pull up from the heavyweights now is Ambuja Cement. Suddenly, just in the last five minutes, Ambuja Cement has spiked up. It's now up almost four percent. So just look at that chart. Uh, it's found a new set of wings just in the last half hour. And remember, this space is a space that has really gotten beaten down post demonetization. Ultra Ultratech Cement is not too far behind. In fact, that too has just spiked up in the last five ten minutes. Uh, Mr. Tulsi, and come in on this. Uh, you know, after a very bad uh, two months we are seeing some revival in the cement space uh, any of the heavyweight cement stocks that you like now so, in fact, I have been giving the positive bias on the cement stocks for the last one week because if you see the pessimism which we have seen having built the victim after the uh, after the automobile was cement and third was NBFC and in fact if you take a call on the cement stocks I am highly positive on all the mid-size cement stocks but I have been giving three or four stocks, you know, which which are looking quite good. One is Ultratech Cement, second is Ramco Cement, third India Cement, and fourth is the, you know either you choose ACC or Ambuja because both can get qualified in the same category. But I have been keeping my positive stance on the mid-sized cement stocks like Sanghi Industries, Kesoram Industries, Century Textile, NCL Industries. They have all been looking quite good. Okay, Mayuresh Joshi is also with us. Mayuresh, good afternoon and happy New Year to you. Uh, 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 I wanted your thoughts on uh, the the cement pack. Uh, which one would you pick out of the lot? So afternoon, Nanuj. Uh, happy new year to you, Sonia, Lata, and the entire team at CNBC. Uh, again, I think cement as a structural story uh, is expected to do well over the next two years. With <laughs> Yes, you will see an impact coming through in Q3, both in terms of volumes probably going down and realizations coming down. At the same time, input costs, uh, which include coking coal, which includes uh, pet coke, have risen sharply for the cement companies, and that will effectively have a say in terms of how the ribbit upper ton uh, pans out. Uh, so largely, I think the entire play in terms of utilization levels going up from the current 70, 75 over the next two years, hitting 80, 85, and the leverage you're getting played on balance sheets still holds true. Q3, Q4 might be a dampener of sorts when it comes to actual numbers. But again, I think the cyclical recovery is very well on the cards post that uh, with the kind of moves that you've seen that the Prime Minister has announced uh, and housing accounting for almost 65-70% of cement demand, expectations are that uh, order flows over the next few quarters will be uh, thick and fast along with infrastructure expected to pick up meaningfully as government reforms head towards this sector. So again, I think I'll be keeping my bags ready. Uh, stocks like Ultratech from the large cap, JK Cement from the mid cap is something that uh, I'll probably be inclined to look at. Okay, let's take a break on that note. We still have about 10 more minutes left. As we do that, let's get you some opinion from Atul Suri who says the current year is looking tougher for the, for the market and that the Nifty could test 7500 if it breaks the important support zone of 7900. I think this level of 7900 to 8000 in Nifty is very, very important. You even see the way the option build-up has been for this current series. And why this month of Jan is important is because of your results post-monetization. You're going to get a lot of surprise results, I think. Uh, the immediate area, the, the shorter term kind of uh, resistance is around 8 to 7.5. 
that's been the uh, band for the last top for the last two months and the big challenge will be if we move to 8600 so you know you can't really paint the coming year with a broad stroke br uh, brush you know because you aren't getting that sense of clarity on the charts in terms of uh, patterns etc i think it's going to be a clawing game whether this 7900 8000 holds 8275 to 8600 gets taken out the, the, the most beaten down or top down theme is consumption but all consumption stocks are not the same a lot of them are available 20 30 percent and i think that there we are going to get some silver linings and bright spots and that's where the opportunity is going to be so that's why i say that it's going to be a difficult index point of view here but i think that there'll be a lot of opportunities in stocks i just spoke about banking you know i think there's not going to be a lot of clarity because suddenly it seems to be in the vortex of the storm you know so that there seems to be a lot happening there and a lot of fluidity and a lot of surprises and that's what you don't like in the market. You like a certain consistency, clarity. Guys, welcome back. It's largely been a nothing sort of a day for the market. We've been ambling within flat terrain for a major part of the day and the cash market volumes too are not that high today. But there has been plenty of action in the broader market. So, Deep Bandhupadhyay also joins into our discussion. So, Deep, hi, um, afternoon. The stock of the moment really is m and It's up more than 4% now and picking up pace ever since it reported uh, good tractor growth and relatively decent auto sales numbers as well. If because that worry is now out of the way, do you think it's time to be buying any of the auto stocks? Well, I'll be still cautious, uh, Sonia. I think m and of course, did pretty well. Uh, the tractor sales numbers are definitely much, uh, you know, above the expectations. Obviously, the inventory at the, uh, you know, the vendor levels, at the, at the, at the dealer levels were not really high. Uh, so, the replenishment of inventory at the uh, dealer level is also happening. But whatever it may be, the tractor sales numbers are quite impressive. Even the, uh, you know, the SUV and other numbers, commercial vehicle numbers are good. Uh, but one has to remember, Remember the fact that you know the demonetization has hit and was supposed to hit most the cash sales now that cash sales in automobile used to happen maximum in uh, two wheelers and that's why you see Bajaj autos of the world getting hit badly uh, it's not going to hit so much the tractor sales and the commercial vehicle sales which always had an element of bank finance uh, but having said that if I have to pick up one stock in the automobile space I will still go with Tata Motors I think uh, you know they, they, they are doing pretty well uh, next couple of years we are expecting Tata Motors to produce outstanding results not based on uh, the Indian numbers but based on the JLR numbers they are looking pretty good and I think Tata Motors at current level can be a buy for an investor with one year plus time horizon okay uh Ashwani intraday you had given some of these PSU stocks as buy calls uh, dredging MMTC uh, good to carry home or uh, would you be booking profits here see I was looking at the nifty PSC index and uh, that is trading at almost a 52 week high so that indicates to you that all PSU stocks are looking good in fact the ones which have corrected like container corporation MMTC NMDC dredging corporation so there's definitely seems to be some tailwind here even HPBP is now beginning to pick up I used to have this favorite ETF called CPSC ETF launched by Goldman I think even that should do uh, fairly well given the kind of momentum these PSU stocks have Okay, Mr. Wilson, your thoughts on this uh, entire space? Uh, uh, the market is sensing something clearly. I mean, you're, you're seeing this huge rally uh, uh, regardless of which sector these PSUs are in. Anuj, I think you have to take an individual call on each PSU because if you take a call on Hindustan Copper, maybe the non-ferrous metal story is playing on. But I would like to touch these two stocks. One is STC and second is MMTC. In fact, in, if you see in case of STC, the company, in fact, that company used to be an intending agent. They used to be the canalized agency for import of uh, uh, imported cars and all so many things. So uh, what people or the street has been estimating that they are holding a huge chunk of properties. And if you go through the balance sheet in 2000, FY 2015, company has revalued all their land and building. And that value comes to at around a thousand crore. And in fact, post that people are expecting that probably the value has gone much more because the valuation at that time was very conservative which is generally usually the case and now the government seems to have made up their mind 
that since the things are going on a, on a reform process, there is nothing, you know, which has remained on a restrictive list or maybe on a canalized list. Same thing is for MMTC. MMTC used to be the can or is the canalized agency for importing minerals and metals. And again, same things are not seen. So maybe if I take a call on STC, I see huge value lying in that because 90% uh, 90 stake is held by the government. And if they go for the strategic divestment, which has been indicated by the by the government also, that they won't hesitate in going or taking a strategic disinvestment call and if both falls in that category I think STC has a market cap of closure to about 12-1300 crore and that is giving a good value. I, I will be a bit cautious on the MMTC because the market cap is very high closure to about 6000 crore and I have not been able to take a call on the real estate really held by the company because they used to have the big go-downs for storing these minerals and metals. So this is the in fact real estate is the real story for both these canalized agency that is STC and MMTC. Okay, we just have about three more minutes to go before the day comes to an end. So let's quickly get you some views from Vallabh Bhansali uh, on what he believes could be the trajectory for the markets. I think the first half uh, or most of it should remain uh, bottoms of market. But I think with a lot more confidence because I think the year of break was 2016. We broke from a lot of traditions. So I think we have a lot of policy clarity that will emerge uh, very soon in the next six to eight weeks. And uh, that will make uh, the bottom pickers or the bottom stock, uh, bottom up people more comfortable with greater policy clarity. So I see better days ahead. I definitely think I haven't for a long time seen a sharp cut like this, and I think more banks will follow. One thing that I liked about the recent announcements, uh, and uh, I hope that that gets built on, was uh, very measured approaches. It was not a populist kind of thing. And they were in different areas. Nothing was uh, out of hand. If you see more money come out and advances go out to contractors, I think uh, the rate cut plus some of those measures will really boost the sentiment. I think uh, the moment for the populist was the 31st December. And if on that day uh, he chose uh, not to be populist and be very measured, I think the risk is over. Okay, let's uh, just do a quick recap. Uh, just about two minutes left for markets to close. Before I do that, just pull out the contribution plate. Uh, and you know, Sonia, it's interesting that if you look at the index uh, today, uh, the index is closing in the red, but there are more index winners than index losers. And the market breadth was also in the favor of advances. It's only the damage of HDFC twins. Uh, and HDFC in particular, 20 point damage coming from HDFC. Otherwise, this market was uh, well in the green. Uh, but that tells you about uh, the, the late pullback that we have seen. But since ma market is ending down, let's start with the losers first. HDFC is your top loser. Bajaj Auto and Infosys uh, among other major losers. Uh, of course, uh, Bajaj Auto uh, after the interview that the management had with us. Banks were down, so ICICI, Bank of Baroda, State Bank of India, they were all also on the lower end. Uh, uh, let's talk about some winners then. Cement did well, so Ambuja Cement, Ultratech, both these stocks were higher, ACC as well. Uh, towards then there was quite a bit of uh, green that you saw in some of these names. And Metals did well, Tata Steel was higher, Hindalco was higher, NMDC was higher, so a lot of these stocks did well in trade today. Uh, and of course the other sector of the day was Autos, uh, barring a Bajaj Auto that we spoke about, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Motors, Maruti, all these stocks were up. So either uh, the, the numbers were better than expected like in case of m, &M or the market believes that the worst has been priced in say for example Maruti which actually gained 3% so all in all a good trading session for all the auto names barring Bajaj as I said uh, but uh, Metcaps through the day outperformed Sonia Oh yes they did and you know what uh, the, there were many pockets that stood out but the pocket that really uh, stood out today was the PSU stock. So MMTC, STC, Dredging Corporation, NBCC, ITI, HMT, all these stocks were up anywhere between 5 to 20 odd percent and the volume action was also pretty good on all of these names. Apart from that, uh, you also had some sugar stocks that rallied. So Rana, Sugar, Sri Renuka, Bajaj, Hindustan were all up and about 6 to 10 percent. Remember, this was the pocket that rallied last week as well. So that continues. Real estate stocks had a good play because of the announcements that came in over the weekend. So India Bulls Real Estate, DLF, um, you know, a couple of others. Unitech also had a bit of a bump up. But that's still a 4 rupee stock, so keep an eye out on that. Uh, India Bulls Housing Finance was up in the green. Jet Airways came off from the uh, bottom quite a bit. So despite the higher ATF prices, Jet Airways sank initially, but then it recovered. And India Cements was the other one. Remember, it was Ashwini's morning call, 9.14 call, and that stock had a pretty good run today. 
5.5% higher on India Cements. But uh, on the losing end, uh, you did have a couple of these stocks. LIC Housing Finance came off quite a bit. Uh, you had a Federal Bank that was down about 6 tenths of a percent and MTNL2 was a bit under pressure. But we've come to the end of uh, trade. It's been a flat day for the markets, the Sensex and the Nifty. Of course, we did recover from the low, so that was a good thing. Uh, better yet was the market breadth and the mid-cap index. So in a sense, there was a lot more participation coming into the broader markets today with the mid-cap index seeing a huge outperformance. But let's get some closing calls before we end uh, the show for the day. Uh, Ashwini, your morning 9.14 call was India Cements. That's worked out very well. So it's closed with a 5.5% gain. Would you continue to hold a position there or, or you know, would you advise it for the slightly medium term? See, possibly cement moved because of these, uh, you know, housing shops, etc. So that was uh, an easy call. But given the low volume, uh, you know, uh, things are not showing uh, follow through so easily. So yes, you can carry stuff for three to five days, but uh, you know it looks difficult to see a big bull market coming with such low volumes. The other sector you can carry positions is the PSU space. So given the kind of tailwind we have, you know you could carry several of those PSU stocks. Other than that, uh, you know if Bank Nifty is going to go in one direction and Nifty in the other. Uh, it looks very difficult how we can break 8150 on the downside or 8250 on the upside. So uh, there isn't a real clear trend. So try to keep modest profit targets and uh, uh, keep your stop strong because you know uh, news flow is going to really whip the market left and right. Okay, but uh, are you are you pretty certain in that case that the bank Nifty and Nifty are moving in different direction and the bank Nifty is going to underperform in the near term? Is, is that the message of the day today? It's absolutely clear. Uh, the bank Nifty or the domestic rate sensitive are going to underperform and the uh, you know external facing sectors like metals, oil and gas, IT, they are the ones which are going to outperform. So bank Nifty, you know, you could probably use rallies to sell whereas uh, dips on metals and oil and gas etc to buy so this will be kind of a two phase type market won't show follow through uh, in either direction and uh, you know if you go down uh, you'll come back uh, by the second half if you go up a whole lot you'll come down by the second half that sort of looks like uh, the kind of play very contracting type market Okay, Sudeep, uh, before we end the day uh, any large caps or mid caps that you are buying right now? Well, one stock, uh, Sonia, we have been uh, looking at uh, very closely is MCX. I think it's a great story in the making. Uh, you know, it's got beaten down for multiple reasons over the uh, 15 and 16. But now I think uh, with 90% plus commodity trading uh, market share, uh, I think there is a solid uh, uh, possibility of significant gain coming in the stock over the next one, one and a half year. The regulatory changes which are expected will only go to help the company. Uh, so MCX is a good buy at current level. Investors can definitely look at that. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for that. We will wind up the day, take a break on that note. But uh, for autos, it doesn't look like a rosy picture as 2017 starts. Industry veterans say that revival of the Indian economy